All right, so Sentinel 4D's newest release just came out, um, that being 2025.2. Uh, and while most of the announcements and new features were a bit disappointing, um, there are a couple of things worth going over. So today what we're going to do is dive into the kind of new, but not really new, spline modifiers, or are they deformers? Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, most of these have been in the asset browser, uh, but now they've added them um, to our regular deformers list out here, and they're kind of in their own category. So let's go ahead and get started. And if you are curious about the deformers, they are organized kind of based on this particular uh, structure here, where it's shapes, transform, break, sub uh, surface, spline um actually funny enough you don't see the new spline ones uh in here um uh, but they have been added um in their own category here so i suspect they'll fix that pretty quickly so um let's start with our first spline deformer here uh, the branch spline uh now as these are deformers or modifiers i guess as they're called um they do work pretty much the same way as that they need to be a child all right, I guess that's something else that's a little bit odd that they're calling them modifiers, even though they're in deformers, um, but they work the same way. They need a child. So the branch spline deformer, as the name kind of implies, does create a branch kind of look or effect here. Um, you can adjust the count, the branches, if you want more or less. All right, the spread. And a lot of these properties do a great job of adding some variation, some irregularity to make this look a little bit more believable and less kind of computer generated, a um, little less perfect. So length, right? Variation can help with that, all this stuff. And we're kind of making a wreath. I don't know if you noticed it in the previous example. Um, you can work with the initial direction to spread them out more. Um, that's kind of a cool, interesting thing as well more steps if you want to increase you know some of the detail there but yeah overall hopefully you're getting the idea of how this can and does work a little bit of bend there isn't a bad thing whether you want gravity it's kind of a nice touch as well to just once again break things up make it look a little bit more believable um, as well as some global settings as well uh, keep in mind with a lot of these if not all of these uh, deformers slash modifiers they are still splines and so we could use something like a sweep now place this in there along with a second shape we want to be kind of extruded along our spline so i'll make a very small circle for that and now we have something like this now pretty much any property in here could be animated so whether it's the count whether it's the spread all of that stuff can be animated uh, now what i don't actually know is how it would work say in the sweep animating its start growth and end growth and that seems to work okay we don't get a lot of you know the spline itself the branch scaling down, really just kind of appeal, appearing. Still though, not a bad overall look, although we are left with the original spline. Okay, so I suspect you could come in here, especially with um, perhaps the length, you could work with that in addition to the branch, um, to the property in the sweep here, we want to animate the end growth get something that looks kind of interesting now just to kind of finish this off as a wreath really quickly i'll create a polygon which if you're going to show me a triangle as an icon why not make it a triangle but i will just select those two points after making this editable weld assuming i can find it where are you weld there you are and now i have my simple leaf and i'll put that leaf actually before i put it in a cloner let's adjust its axis so that it's at the back there. And drop this into a cloner by holding Alt. Switch the mode here to Object. Make sure we clone onto our sweep. And we can just increase the count here till we get the number we want. So not perfect by any means. We could certainly come in here to the transform and work with the orientation a little bit. All right, to get something that maybe lines up a little bit better, but it is gonna be pretty random, so. There's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of what we wanted. 
But yeah, there is our first um, example there. So let's group that, right clicking on it, choosing group objects or Alt G, moving it down, and we can move on to the next one, which is um, the break spline. All right, this one's kind of similar to the pull spline. There are some differences. Um, I'm sorry, the dash, although eh, pulse too, perhaps to a certain extent. Um, but with this, why don't we try it on, we'll go with a circle. And it's a little bit tough to see. Um, so I think putting this into a sweep is gonna just make it easier to visualize this. So I held Alt when I created the sweep to make sure the objects got created inside as a child. Another circle in there. And now we can start to see the breaks a little bit more. They still are pretty subtle. Um, but we can go into the break spline and first of all, adjust the number of these, uh, increase the gap, which can help. Uh, and what's nice is in conjunction with the gap here, you can go into the sweep and work with the caps. So if you wanted to round out those segments, you absolutely could. And notice how, you know, even doing something like this, I get kind of a bracelet look, shape that would be, you know, if we had a little bit of a gap here, a little bit trickier to model. Um, than before. Back in the modifier uh, or deformer, man, that's gonna take some getting used to. You can offset this if you wanted to animate it. You can work with the bias to kind of push more of these towards the start and end. So you can almost get like a, a pie graph, or I guess it's not quite a pie graph, but almost that kind of look there. I'm using the bias. Or if you just want to add some randomness, you can do that here. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, you know, does something relatively specific, but if this is something you need, gonna be a lot easier than making it by hand. So let's group that. We'll just move it down. All right, let's actually just move both of those down. And that gets us to, I keep going to our effectors, but the uh, catenary, perhaps I'm, saying that incorrectly probably the one that um you know has the least uses but if i created a line segment and it's really short so let's make it a little bit longer here let's see if we can get this to work um it's going to just give you almost like a sagging wire look without having to model it and so that's what it does pretty much straight away uh, there are some different modes here you can work with so um rather than just the basic ends can be helpful direction as well give you a little bit more control or step for my purposes what i've experimented with step seems to be the easiest to work with can work with the the axis so if you wanted to go to go a different way keep in mind that would be dependent on the direction your spline is going our spline was going along the x axis so that's why we want the axis it's working on to be on the X, but you could do the length here. You know, the one kind of reason you might want to use another one of the um, modes here is so that uh, it might be easier to configure kind of where the end is. So that way, all right, um, that's weird. It, there we go. Um, you know, if you had this between two, you know, holes, for instance, and you wanted to create a wire, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about adjusting um, the length here. So we can have that. We have the point count. So if you want more or less of these, almost like waves, you can do something like that. Whether you want it to be aligned to the center or end, kind of like a the text object or former mode text object. Um, and so, you know, pretty straightforward. If you want a wave or almost wire type look here, for some splines. And once again, this too can work in a sweep. So if I put it into a sweep, once again, holding Alt or Option, drop in a shape to be kind of extruded along it. Like that, we now get a shape like that. So we can group this, move on. Let's just scoot all of these off to the side here. That gets us to our electric spline, which I've actually actually done a whole 
video on, so I won't spend too much time on this one. Um, but we can do, say, an inside, can apply it there, and we get a very kind of lightning electrified look already. Um, you do have control in this top section for kind of the amount of detail you want. Same with displacement. If you want to create more or less of that effect, you can work with the seed. It's already animated, but um, you can combine the animate with the override time to get um, almost like uh, Cinema 4D, the help file calls it like a flash type thing where it just changes, almost kind of pulses um, every certain amount of frames here, in this case, roughly 15 frames. So that can be helpful, different noise patterns, um, things like that can modify. You can see how it's just kind of moving the electrify along the spline. Notice how it's not really working at the beginning here. Um, and that's because of the fix and start end. All right, we can work with the fix and start end properties to get rid of that if you want the whole shape to be electrified. But like I said, I have a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Um, just like the others though, let's drop it into a sweep just to make it easier to see. Now, what you'll notice with some of these more complex spline shapes, um, saw it a little bit with the um, previous one, is that sometimes when you drop in a spline, you get these really bad, rough, kind of bent and broken parts of your shape. Um, and using smaller shapes can help get rid of this, um, but when you have really, really messed up handles um, and the line is just, you know, crossing over each other, like we're seeing here. Um, it's just hard to get that shape kind of extruded along it without it breaking too much. Sometimes that can work in your favor. Um, other times it may not. Usually it doesn't. Um, Electrify might be one of the exceptions where it wouldn't be the end of the world. But yeah, that's just something to, to keep in mind. All right, because I would say, yeah, those are kind of distracting all of those there. But let's group that up and keep on moving here. That gets us to our pulse spline. And for that, what I'm gonna do is use a helix, make sure it's orientated on the X and Z axis. So it's actually really more moving along the Y axis. And I'm gonna increase the height here as well as the end angle to get it to be a little bit longer, a little bit easier to kind of visualize. So I'm gonna drop the pulse modifier deformer on there and notice how it's just kind of moving along it, right? Honestly, something you could do with a sweep if you animated the start and end properties on it. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is procedural. So it doesn't require any keyframes. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the electrify because it's um, a little bit distracting here. This is also quite fast. Um, that you can do, I don't like to skip too far down here, but the loop point. So every 30 frames, it's restarting. So if we were to set this to say 90, now it's gonna go through and do this for um, the entire timeline here or 90 frames. So I will put this into a sweep as well to make it a little bit easier to see. So we have something like that now. Back in the pulse modifier here, you do have um, a few different modes. So you have pulse, you have continuous, which uh, the way we have it set up is, is pretty similar, um, or you have one shot. Okay, um, pulse seems to be the one that I would probably find myself using the most. You can do the total length, so that way we're seeing it move the entire length up right, as opposed to a shorter amount where it's only going to be kind of moving along at any given time, 20% of our shape. We also have variation, never a bad thing to add more of. You have the start and end. Um, that kind of works in conjunction with your loop point here um, for how many times it's going to go. So it was gonna start at zero because that's what we have it set at. And because it was gonna loop, it was just gonna keep looping um, until it reaches the end frame, okay? Could also add some randomize if you wanted to, if you were having it repeat several times in your frame range, as I'm not doing that, um, it wouldn't make any difference here. All right. Um, you could also reverse it, because why not? 
And so there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. Create some interesting animations procedurally without having to keyframe it yourself. Another thing that I think makes sense to come in here um, and do with say the pulse spline is in the object tab, um, either try working with the end growth, I'm sorry, not the end growth, um, the end scale. Oh, and I went and broke it, there we go. So end scale, and that should make one end of this a little bit narrower. Okay, I think part of that is because the way I have this set up. So let's just reset this to the default. And back in our sweep here and scale zero. And kind of see it um, towards one end getting smaller. I suspect if we came into our pulse spline and had it do, yeah, the total length of 100, you would see that. Now that's not quite what I would want, right? And you can see how it's getting thicker. Um, set that back to 90. Uh, but yeah, it at least gives us once again, variation in the thickness of this as it animates. So while not ideal, still a little bit more interesting, still something worth pointing out. So that will do it for the pulse spline. So let's group that, go ahead and move it. And that gets us to the last and one. Um, final one, the dash spline, which once again is another kind of procedural way of breaking up a spline into dashes, as you might expect given the name. So I'll put this into a sweep. Once again, use a, a shape to get something we can actually see in there. And yeah, we have our dashes. Now, by default, these dashes are not animated. So keep that in mind. Um, you do have a few different modes here for creating them, whether it's a specific length, whether it's a specific count or a percentage. Um, length seems to be the easiest one, which is why it's probably the default, but you can adjust the length to get more or less of them. You can offset them is an easy way to animate this. Okay. Um, if you wanted to animate that property, but really rate would be a continuous way of animating them. So the higher rate you go, very much like the cloner. If you've ever worked with the cloner and cloned onto something on a, say a spline, um, you can just have it move at a specific speed. So that's a nice way of creating some animation there. And then you also have for the pattern, um, some ways of working with that. So whether it's percent or custom, which I'll get to in a second, you can switch the visibility here if you want more or less of that to be visible, longer dashes, if you will. Um, but in the custom, you have several different dash amounts, which you can see here, all right, with the way this is. And so you can turn on the different types of dashes you want. And if you actually do two together, you get longer or shorter. So a dash on means you will have geometry, a dash off means you will have a space. And so you can create your own patterns there and you can add more. So if you wanted to have some longer ones and then shorter ones, you absolutely could do that. And that allows you to make your own dash pattern, your own animation. Once again, kind of a nice procedural way. I think a lot of these um, spline, modifiers, deformers, whatever you want to call them, uh, work great um, for creating FUI uh, elements because they have some baked in ways of creating animation, things you don't have to worry about keyframing. All right, but with that, that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.